no matter how meticulous you might be, getting a completely clean 3D scan is not always possible, especially when it comes to objects with complicated or recessed surfaces. When you're working with photogrammetry, having noisy or distorted forms is not unheard of. And then there's other things like dust further messing up an object's surface. So we need to establish a process where we can create clean forms out of a messy scan, and a 3D object that is convincing enough to pass as the real thing. The good news is that nowadays we have some amazing tools at our disposal. ZBrush, for example, is great for this type of work. We can go from a scan to a final product in a relatively short amount of time. So let's see how we can clean up a 3D scan. I bought these shoes a month ago, but because I wanted to do this video I didn't want to wear them, at least until I got a good scan out of them. After a fair bit of procrastination, I finally bit the bullet and took all the necessary photos for this scan. I won't bore you with the scanning process, instead I'll just show you the final 3D model. It's relatively detailed, but there are some issues here and there. Let's go through the model and identify some of these problematic areas. This one here is usually caused when the software doesn't properly align the photos. It might look like a difficult thing to fix, but it's actually quite easy to do. The bottom of the sole has a couple of issues as well. This area, for example, is difficult to capture properly, and that's why we get this bumpy result. The loop at the back of the shoe is another challenging area to capture. The result, this big lumpy geometry. Then we have these noisy areas here. Some of these bumps is actually dust on the surface of the real object. This little bit of dust is enough to distort the surface. And last but not least, we have to deal with this big hole here. In hindsight, I should have lit this area properly as I was taking the photos. It would have been a much easier fix. I should have also kept the inner cardboard support instead of completely taking it off. But it's too late now, so we have to fix it in post. It's not going to be too hard, but if there's one thing to learn out of all this, is to always try and do the best job possible as you're taking the photos instead of trying to adjust things after the fact. Now, let's see how we can fix these issues. Making big adjustments on the high-res mesh is going to be problematic. As you can see, we're dealing with more than 4 million polygons here. Working on a low-res mesh, on the other hand, is much easier to adjust. So that should be our first action item. Let's duplicate our object so we have the original scan intact. Apart from safekeeping, we also need it for all the projection we'll have to do later on. Okay, so far, so good. If we wanted to go super high-end, we would have to create separate objects for all different parts of the shoe. Shoelaces, sole, inner shoe, etc. But for now, let's just separate the loop from the rest of the shoe. I'm gonna mask the area of the loop we want to keep, and then make a polygroup out of it. We go to polygroups and then group masked. So now if we enable polyframes by hitting shift and F, we have our loop selection and the shoe selection. Perfect. We need two copies of the shoe, one for the loop and one for the rest of the shoe. So let's duplicate the object once more and let's start naming things so it's easier to keep track of what is what. On the loop layer, we're gonna hide the rest of the shoe and then go to geometry, Modify Topology, and Delete Hidden. Now this layer is reserved for the loop. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the shoe layer, but we'll reverse the selection. Hitting Control shift twice, we'll switch the polygroup selected. So let's go through the Delete Hidden command once more. And now we have the shoe on one layer, and the loop on another. Both layers look very messy, so we should clean up the areas a little bit more. We're gonna use ZBrush's excellent selection tools. We enable them by hitting Ctrl Shift, and for this job we're gonna need the lasso selection. Adding the Alt or Option modifier into the mix, we switch to excluding things from this selection. So let's hide the unnecessary geometry, and once we're done, we're going to delete it.
Let's now do the same for the loop and hit delete hidden once more. We're going to use Dynamesh to close all the holes. We don't need a really high resolution, so a value of 256 should be fine. Now our mesh is fully closed. Let's disable Dynamesh now. And the next step on our list is to reproject all the lost information. With a scan sub tool visible, we're going to select our low res mesh and click on the project button. Now we'll subdivide the mesh by holding Ctrl D and reproject once more on this level. We need to repeat this process until we reach the original scan's polygon amount, otherwise we will lose detail. The original scan was 4.3 million polygons in size, so we need to reach at least that level of subdivisions. So far we're at 1.2 million, so we'll subdivide once more, and now we're at 4.8. Reproject once more, and we're all good. We now have an object with multiple subdivision levels, which is exactly what we need. Now we can easily make big adjustments on the lower levels. We need to do the same thing on the loop, but we're not gonna go through that now. It's nothing different than what we've already done. Now let's go to the lowest level and start cleaning things up. To do that we're gonna use two variations of the smooth brush, the smooth peaks and smooth valleys. These are perfect because we don't get this huge smoothing effect that we usually get with a smooth brush. Both of them operate in a more localized manner. By the way, these brushes are created by adjusting the brush modifier size, which can be found under the modifier section. So in case you want to create your own variation, you know what you have to adjust. For this area at the back of the shoe, we have a lot of little bumps, so the Smooth Peaks brush is the way to go. And since we're here, we might as well smooth out the other bumps. But let's do that with a smaller Z value. Now that the surface is relatively even, we can go with a regular smooth brush and a small Z value and smooth out the whole area. That's the first level done. We need to repeat that process for all other subdivision levels. So we go one step up, clean the peaks again, and then smooth out slightly the whole area. As you can see, it's super easy to get the result we want because we're working with low subdivision levels. If I fast forward with the process, this is the final result. A perfectly clean and smooth surface. Awesome! Now let's fix the messy recessed areas at the bottom of the shoe. We're gonna follow the same principle as before, but this time we'll use the smooth valleys brush instead of this smooth peaks. If there are any bits sticking out after the smoothing process, we can always use the Smooth Peaks brush. As you can see, we don't have to do much to smooth out the surface. It goes by really fast. We need to repeat the process for all subdivision levels, but once we do, we have a really nice clean looking form. Just as a reminder, this is how the form looked before, and this is how it looks now. <laughs> Quite a difference. The plastic hooks of the shoelaces can be cleaned up the same way, but with one small addition. Once the surface is clean, we can go over it with the H polish brush to get this nice hard surface look. Let's now deal with this big problematic area on the inside of the shoe. It's a little bit hard to reach, so we need to find a way to get in there. This is where Z brushes, polygroups, and selection tools come in handy. I've created two polygroups, one for the sole and one for the rest of the shoe. So we can first get rid of the sole, and then with the regular selection tools, we'll start hiding bits and pieces until we have a relatively unobstructed view of the interior. If we were going to work on this inner surface extensively, a polygroup dedicated to this area alone would be best. But for now we don't need to fuss so much, we'll only roughly adjust the form, just to get the point across. I'll use the inflate brush by holding down Alt or Option, and then I'll start smoothing out the area and roughly forming it into shape. 
Of course, this needs a lot more work than these uh, quick brush strokes, but the process is not different than what we've already done. Cleaning up a high poly mesh can take as much or as little time as we want. It all depends on the budget available and how close the camera will go. So the whole process could take anywhere between an hour or several days. Now, let me show you how to get these small details on the surface of the shoe. You can see there's this nice little pattern there. That is very difficult to capture with photogrammetry, but we can easily add it to the mesh by using the image data we already shot. Here we have a smoothed out version of the sole, and in subtools we have the high res scan and the texture applied as polypaint. Here's what we need to do. We're gonna project the texture onto the sole and then we'll deform the mesh based on the texture data. For some reason, we cannot just project the polypaint. We have to project the geometry as well. So we need a small workaround to make it all work. We're gonna first have to store the smooth out version of the sole as a morph target. More on that in a bit. Now, we're gonna go to project and hit the project all button. Even though there are two buttons there, one for geometry and one for color, disabling the geometry part won't make a difference. ZBrush will still project the geometry, which we don't need at this step. Maybe it's a bug, maybe it's something else, I have no clue, but that's how things work, and that's why we stored a morph target. Depending on the complexity of the mesh, the reprojection might take some time. Let's hide now the scan data so we have an uninterrupted view of this soul. And now we'll go to the Morph Target section and hit Switch. This will return the original smooth mesh, but it will keep the polypaint data. Excellent. Let's see now how we can use the polypaint data to deform the mesh. We need to go to Masking, Mask by Color, and Mask by Intensity. And then it's just a matter of going to the deformation panel and dialing in the right values. I use the inflate and the noise options. Small values are good enough, so no need to go crazy. I used three for inflate and one for noise. And now we have a nice detailed sole. We can do the exact same thing on other parts of the shoe, for example, the main body. We can bring in so much detail that the final mesh will look exactly like the real thing. It's really cool to see how much we can push the scan. The last thing I want to show you is the Z Project brush. Let's say we went a little bit crazy with the smoothing process and we want to get some information back. We can easily do that by taking the data we want out of the original scan. So with the original scan visible, we'll select the Z Project brush and then start swiping. Notice something interesting here. Not everything was captured, and that's because we only projected the valleys. If we also want the peaks, we need to hold down Alt or Option and start swiping again. And now we have the complete set of data. As you can see, even if we mess up or change our mind, we can quickly recover. So let's recap some of the essential parts of the cleanup process. Masking, polygroups, and ZBrush's selection tools allow us to easily separate different parts of a mesh. To close polygon holes, we can use DynaMesh and then project the necessary details by using the original scanned data. For easier mesh changes, we need to create lower subdivisions. This will allow us to make drastic changes that will easily propagate to higher subdivisions. The brushes, smooth peaks and smooth valleys are perfect for more controllable smoothing. Other useful brushes are the Inflate and the H Polish brush. And finally, the polypaint data will help us get this extra bit of geometry detail. This is done by masking by color intensity and using ZBrush's deformation options. And that's it. It might look complex or overwhelming, especially if you're trying things out for the first time, but give it a couple of tries and everything will click into place. If you need help with the whole retopologizing and texturing process, I already have a video about that, so make sure to check the video description or click the video on the end card. And of course, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.